This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Hello, welcome to another episode of Make Thrift Buy, the show where you send in cute, weird, expensive, mass-produced, ETC clothes that you found on the internet and then I try my best to recreate them. Today's item suggestion comes from Ashlyn who wanted to see me recreate this cute off the shoulder crop top with ties originally sold by Topshop for $35. Now Ashlyn wanted me to recreate it because it's totally sold out and they can't find it anywhere else. It's also a fairly simple looking piece so I thought it was a perfect candidate to try and make for ourselves. So I suspect that this tutorial is going to be quite beginner friendly so if you're new to the wonderful world of sewing First, welcome, and secondly, you should definitely give this one a go. Okay, so let's begin. So first things first, I'm making this from scratch, so I had to choose the fabric that I wanted to use. I decided on this vintage bolt of cotton fabric, so it's a non-stretchy woven fabric. I think it has quite a 70s vibe to it. So the pieces I needed to cut out of my fabric are just four rectangles. Because this project is only made of four rectangles, it's easy to cut them out, and it also creates minimal fabric waste. Piece number one is a large, long rectangle. I determined the width of the rectangle by measuring around my shoulders and my bust. I took the largest of these measurements, which was my shoulder measurement and then I added another five inches to this. For example, the measurement around my shoulders was 40 inches and I added five to get 45. The height of the rectangle is determined by measuring the length that I wanted the top to be. I measured from the middle of my chest to slightly above my natural waistline and then I added two inches. So I wanted my top to be nine inches tall plus two is 11. This rectangle will make up the back and the front of the bodice of the crop top. Piece number two and three are two identical shaped sleeves. To get the width of this rectangle, I measured around the top part of my arm. Then you'll wanna add five to 10 inches depending on how puffy you want the sleeve to be. The bigger the number, the more puffy it'll be. So I added seven inches to my measurement for some moderate puff. So for example, my arm measurement is 11 inches, add seven and I got 18. The height of these rectangles is determined by the desired sleeve length plus two inches. I wanted my sleeves to be six inches long, so plus two is eight. So then I cut out two of these rectangles and these are the sleeves. The fourth rectangle is going to be the tie at the front of the top. I made my 1.5 inches by 30 inches long and I'm going to set that piece aside for later. Okay, so now I'm going back to my first long rectangle piece. I folded it in half like this to find the midpoint and then I cut a slit at the midpoint and then I tore the fabric straight down the middle at its grain line. This gave me two identical rectangles. Then for just one of these rectangles, I also tore it in half like this. This will give me one long back piece and two front pieces for my top. Then I put these aside for later. Moving on to rectangles two and three, these are the sleeves. But I needed to alter them slightly before I added them to the top. To do this, I folded both sleeves in half like this, making sure to match up the edges exactly, and then put one on top of the other like this. I made super sure that all the edges were exactly lined up, and then I made a mark one inch away from the corner at the bottom and three inches away from the corner at the side here. And then I joined those two marks up into a little right angled triangle like this. Then I cut through all four layers of fabric at once. I used my rotary cutter, but you can use whatever cutting implement you like. So unfolded, each sleeve now looks like this. The two sleeves should still be identical in shape. Now this is an optional step that'll just make the insides of the garment look nice when it's finished and also prevent fraying of the fabric as well. I used my overlocker to serge all the raw edges of fabric from rectangles one, two, and three. And this is what an overlocker aka serger looks like it's slightly different from a normal sewing machine and one of its functions is giving nice finished edges on fabric like this but if you don't have an overlocker there's a cheaper hack grab yourself some pinking shears they are scissors with a zigzag edge like this and when you're cutting out your fabrics use these instead of normal scissors or the tearing method pinking shears help prevent fraying as well you can also do a zigzag stitch around the edges for a kind of fake serged look again this step is optional but it will make your piece last longer and look a little bit better so now it's time to attach the sleeves to the bodice pieces i placed the biggest rectangle the back piece right sides up and then i placed one of the sleeves down on top of it right sides down so that these edges are matching up and the fabrics are right sides together. Then I grabbed the other sleeve and I did the same thing. I placed it right sides down along the other edge. Next, I'm going to sew the sleeves on like this. Now I wanted to show you this just a little bit more close up. So the stitches need to go right down to this point here and try to make them the same on each side because it'll end up a lot neater later on the more identical you can do it. Okay, so with the sleeves sewn to the back piece and unfolded, it looks like this. 
Then I grabbed my two smaller front pieces and I put one front piece on top of the sleeve, right sides together and matched up the edges. Now it was easier to see what I was doing if I flipped it around first, so that's what I'm doing on the other sleeve. So it basically looks the same as when I sewed the sleeves to the back piece. Again, I sewed both sleeves to both of the front pieces like this. And now I have this one really long, weird looking piece of sewn together fabric. But here's where the magic happens. I folded this long piece of sewn together fabric in half, right sides together, Together, carefully matching up the seams and the sleeves and matching up the front pieces in the middle here. And look at that, that's kind of looking like an off the shoulder top. Next, I pin the front and the back pieces together taking extra care around the armhole and I'm going to sew a straight stitch up the sides of the top to this point where the arm stitches start from before. And then I'm gonna sew down the sleeve like this. Now I actually think this is creating an inset seam. Somebody please correct me in the comments if not. Anyway, these seams are a little bit difficult to do and require a lot of precision as you're basically joining up four corners together. So don't be worried if you don't get it perfect. I definitely didn't get it perfect here. And I still have a lot of practice to do with these kind of seams, but you know, this is fine. Your top will still function, even if your seam isn't perfect. And because of the kind of free form and roughly nature of this top, you won't notice it at all once you're finished. Anyway, after doing that for both sides and sleeves of the top, I refolded the top so that the two front pieces were on top of each other, right sides together with the edges matching up. Now, these are the edges that were in the middle of the top before. I pinned the two pieces of fabric together and next I'm going to sew them together like this, but I'm only sewing up to here. I'm leaving the top four inches left unsewn. This is to create that little hole in the center of the top where the ties will sit in front. Okay, so on those four inches that I left unsewn, on both sides I folded the fabric in like this and I sewed over the top making a little hem. So that's how I constructed the top. And now it's time to make casings, add elastic, and create those little ruffles and make it fit. I will need four elastic pieces, one for the waistline, two for the armholes, and one for around the shoulders. So this is the elastic I'm using. It's about half an inch wide. First, I wrap the elastic around the point just above my natural waistline, making sure not to pull it too tightly, just so it's comfortable, and I cut it to this length. I did the same around my arms and cut two of these, and then around my shoulders like this, cut it to length as well. To apply the elastic to the armholes and the waist, I followed the same method. With the top inside out, I lined up my elastic with the bottom of the arm so I knew how wide the casing needed to be. I wanted the casing a little wider than the elastic. I then flipped the fabric like this all the way around the bottom of the armhole. And the next thing I'm going to do is use a straight stitch to sew all the way around like this, leaving room between the stitches and the edge to make a casing for the elastic. Oh, and by the way, I also pinned it first to keep the fabrics in place. I'm always pinning before I sew. Pinning is important. Anyway, then I sewed almost all the way around the sleeve, leaving a gap of two inches to put the elastic in later. After both sleeves were done, I did the same thing for the bottom of the crop top. I flipped the fabric up, pinned it on, all the way around and then sewed almost all the way around the top except for two inches to leave a gap for the elastic to make that casing. Now, I kept forgetting to leave that small gap where the elastic will go in later. So here's a little song that I started singing while sewing so that I would remember and hopefully you watching the tutorial will remember as well. Don't forget to leave the gap. Don't forget to leave the gap when you're sewing on. Casing. Yeah, make that into a hit single. Anyway, I'm stressing this because yeah, I kept forgetting when I was making my earlier versions and it was really annoying to have to cut all those stitches out again. So here's the approximate size you want your gap to be. Basically it just needs to be wide enough to fit your elastic through it. Now the casing around the shoulders is a little bit different. I folded the edges down just like for the arms and the bottom, but I don't need to leave a gap this time because of the slit in the front of the top. That already creates a gap for me to put my elastic through. So I sewed this casing on all the way around like this. And this is what the top looks like with all the casings now sewn. Now it's time to add the elastic. I stuck a safety pin through one end of one of the arm elastics and then I pushed the elastic through the gap in the casing and then I used the safety pin to pull the elastic through all the way until it came back out the other end. You can put a safety pin in the other end of the elastic if you're worried about losing it, but if you like to live on the wild side like me, just make sure the other end of the elastic doesn't go disappearing into your casing. When I pulled the elastic out the other end, I removed the safety pin and now the elastic is in a loop. I put the ends together like this and then I sewed over the top of them to connect them together. And then I sewed the small gap in the casing closed and I repeated this for the other sleeve and the bottom waist casing. 
Now around the shoulders is a little bit different again because I'm going to be adding ties. So remember that really long skinny piece of fabric from way back in the beginning, rectangle four? I took that piece and I laid it flat on my ironing board. Then I folded the edges into the middle like this and ironed it down in place all the way along the strip of fabric. Then I folded it in half lengthways like this and I sewed down this edge. Now you don't need to worry about overlocking or using pinking shears on these edges because the raw edges will be inside the tube. I finished off the raw ends by clipping them with my pinking shears, you could also serge them, and then folding the ends up about half an inch and then sewing over the top like this. Then I cut the tie exactly in half by cutting it in the middle and this gives me two ties. Then, remember that I cut a piece of elastic for around the shoulders? Okay, I grabbed that, and on each end of this piece of elastic, I put one of the ties on top with the unfinished end matching up with the elastic with about one inch of overlap, and then I sewed them together like this. With that done on both sides, this is what my shoulder elastic now looks like. I put a safety pin in one end of this long piece, and then I threaded it all the way through the casing around the shoulders of the top. I pulled the elastic through so that the ends of the fabric ties were just outside the casing. Then I pushed them back through just a little bit inside the casing so that the end of the elastic part sits just inside the tube. I stuck safety pins through both to keep the elastic in place. Then I sewed the elastic and the ties into the top like this. And that's me done. So how does it look? How did I go? So make, thrift, or buy. This project is a... You can definitely make this for yourself. And seriously, I know that I made the tutorial quite long, but that's because I wanted to break it down into simple steps that a total beginner could hopefully understand. Because I think this project is perfect for beginners who are just learning the ins and outs of sewing their own clothes. You're only working with rectangles, you don't need to take very exact measurements, and you're working with woven fabric, so you can even use something like thrifted bed sheets, for example, as a cheap option for fabric. And also, you can get away with only using straight stitches for this entire project as well. So if you're either used to sewing and you want an easy to do project, or if you're new to sewing and you want something you can actually understand and complete, then give this a go. And also don't be worried if it doesn't turn out perfectly the first time. These are all the tops I made trying to get this right. <laughs> If at first you don't succeed, try and try and try and try and try again. I believe in you. So this video is supported by Squarespace. And before you click out of this, there's some really good info in here for people who are just learning to sew. So stick around. Now, I've actually been using Squarespace for the entire past year and a little bit. So I'm super excited that they're sponsoring this episode because I'm already a huge fan of the services they provide. Now, if you have any creative projects on the go or you have a message to share or you need your own website for any reason, you'll definitely want to check Squarespace out. I made my own website with Squarespace space over a year ago now and it's kind of the landing page for what I do here on the internet so if someone's like looking me up and they're like doop de doop who's this Annika Victoria chick what's she all about and they'll find AnnikaVictoria.com which I made entirely with Squarespace now it's really useful because it gives a short snapshot about who I am what I do all the projects I work on my past projects how to get involved in the community and this is my favorite part of the site I'm asked all the time in the comments whether I have any beginner sewing tips or advice well I certainly do and it's on my website this entire beginner sewing resource is something that I created after getting a ton of these requests to make more resources for beginners so it has a lot of stuff from both myself and other people um, whose tutorials I really like on the internet and look how nice this page is and now coming back full circle with this promotion 
I couldn't have made such a nice website without Squarespace. All the website building knowledge that I have is some really basic HTML that I learned in the eighth grade. But you don't even need to know any computer language at all, or really any design knowledge either to use Squarespace. It's so easy to use. It's an all-in-one platform that includes a whole library of beautiful award-winning templates, 24 seven customer service, which I have used it before, and trust me, they are so helpful. Fix my problem right away. They offer you a unique domain so you can have for example, AnnikaVictoria.com. But obviously you can't use that domain, that's mine. The templates and designs are also really flexible, so you can use them for any kind of website. They're made for artists, designers, musicians, even restaurants, and more. Start your free trial today with Squarespace. And your girl also has an offer code for you. Go to squarespace.com forward slash Annika, and then use the code Annika for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for you guys for supporting the companies that support this channel. And don't forget, seriously, check out my website. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon who along with the sponsor of this episode also help to keep this channel running. To become my supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.